Hello, very good day to you and welcome to your latest 10 day trend from the Met Office. There is a lot of hot weather around many parts of the UK at the moment, but before I get to that, I thought I'd look at the bigger picture. Here's the surface pressure chart across the U UK and Europe at the moment. And you can see we have high pressure over Europe and it's this that's dominating our weather, which is why it's so settled, so sunny at the moment as well. But it's important to look higher up at the, in the atmosphere. These are the winds higher up and you can see the direction that they're taking around an upper high. And it's interesting the direction they're going and the shape they're going because if I draw the shape they're in you can see it looks like an omega symbol and this is called an omega block and what we have is this blocking high preventing any fronts coming in from the Atlantic and that's keeping our weather so settled. Also the direction that the winds are coming from and going round plays an important role in the weather we're getting in the UK. You can see we're dragging in our air from the south and that's a hot direction and so it's no wonder that temperatures are rising so high. It's not just the UK that is being affected by this though. In different ways there's other things going on. There's been low pressure out near Iberia recently but also a deep area of low pressure, Storm Daniel, which has been named a Medicaid colloquially in the eastern Mediterranean. Now that is bringing some intense heavy rainfall across parts of Greece. Already some places have seen in excess of a month's worth of rain in just a day and some places could see four to five hundred millimeters of rain over just a few days. So it's no wonder there have been some significant impacts here. Back to the UK and as we go through the rest of the week really we are going to see some forcing coming up from the south and that is going to lead to some convection, some showers developing as we go through the end of the week. There is also an upper trough dipping down from the north so some weak frontal systems pushing their way in here but for most as we go through the next few days we're going to stay under the influence of that high pressure although it st starts to drift away towards the east a little bit and so there will be plenty of fine hot and sunny weather to come. It's not just by day that temperatures have been so far above average. Our nights have been uncomfortably warm. These are the forecast minimum temperatures for Wednesday night. They're going to be similarly high on uh, Thursday night as well. But you can see some towns and cities staying in the high teens, perhaps even low 20s. I wouldn't be surprised if some urban areas stayed a little bit warmer than this. Remember, a tropical night is when temperatures don't drop below 20 Celsius. And I am expecting a few of these, particularly across parts of England and Wales, over the next couple of nights. So really uncomfortable for sleeping and exceptionally warm for the time of year. As we go through the rest of Thursday then just looking at the details and you can see some showers pushing their way northwards on that forcing I mentioned earlier. But interesting about these showers a lot of them are going to come from medium or perhaps even high level cloud. As a result I'm not expecting a huge amount, if any, of the rain to actually reach the ground. There could be some and could be a little bit heavy at times, but a lot of this rain showing up here won't actually reach the ground. There will be some lightning mixed in, so I think that's going to be more of an issue as opposed to the rain itself. Otherwise, though, and you can see across many parts of the UK, though, it's staying fine, sunny and pretty hot as well. Uh, looking as we go through the evening and some of those showers as they cross parts of Scotland are actually going to turn quite intense. There's potential that we could see some heavy rain reaching the ground then. Through Thursday night and into Friday, like we've seen recently, I'm expecting some low clouds, some sea fog to drift in from the North Sea and some other coastal areas could have some murkiness as well. So worth bearing that in mind. A quick look at our temperatures then and the cause of it is those southerly air, that's that southerly air I mentioned earlier. But here's a look at the 500 to 1000 hectopascal thickness. So this is the thickness of the air slightly higher up in the atmosphere. The importance of this is the higher the thickness, the higher the temperatures, the warmer the air. And the higher the thickness is shown by these deeper reds, these deeper colors here. You can see on Wednesday we have pretty high thickness, particularly across the south southeast, getting to around 141 decameters. It does dip down a little bit by Thursday, starting to pick up again by Friday, so some greater thickness pushing its way in. But by the end of Saturday, even greater thickness making its way in with perhaps 141, maybe even 142. And so that is exception, exceptionally high thickness for this time of the year. And that's why temperatures are going to get so high, even higher than what we've already seen. Quick look at our forecast highs then through Thursday and temperatures are looking similar for quite a few places to Wednesday. We're looking at highs around 32. 
possibly 33 Celsius in parts of the southeast. Worth bearing in mind that the highest temperature we've recorded so far this year is only 32.2 back in June. It's pretty exceptional for us to have the hottest day of the year in September. It's only happened a few times in the past. But yes, a very warm or hot day for many of us, particularly in the sunshine and the warmth. The heat is widespread, parts of Scotland getting into the mid to high 20s as well. Similarly warm on Friday, again likely to be in the low 30s across many parts of England and mid to high 20s across the rest of the UK and largely sunny for most of us. And then it's Saturday when we're likely to see the peak in this heat wave, the peak in those temperatures getting to 33 possibly 34 Celsius. That is exceptionally hot for the time of year. Notice though towards parts of Scotland, perhaps even Northern Ireland, we're going to start to see something a little bit cooler, more comfortable pushing its way in. I thought I'd take a quick look at some September records though to put this all into a little bit of context. And the highest all-time UK maximum temperature recorded in September is 35.6. As I said, Saturday we're looking at highs around 33 possibly 34 Celsius, so I'm not expecting that to get broken. Highest minimum temperatures, 21.7. We are expecting some very warm nights over the next few nights. Lots of places staying above 20 possibly could break this record. Interestingly, the Welsh record is 20.5, and I think that's likely to be beaten through the next few nights. But then the other record is the number of days in September where we've reached over 30 Celsius. In 1911, we had five days where we recorded uh, over 30 Celsius somewhere in the UK, but those weren't consecutive days. If we look at the number of consecutive days in September with temperatures above 30 Celsius, then the number's only three. We're already on to day three on Wednesday, and so we are definitely going to beat that record. But if we take a look now at the weather as we go through Friday, because that's important too, lots of hot, sunny uh, weather to be had for the bulk of the UK, any mist and fog burning back towards the coast quite quickly. Some showers coming up from the south, but they are going to be a case of all or nothing and the emphasis on the nothing for most of us. They're most likely towards the west, but really most places are going to avoid them. I'd say there's about a 10% chance anywhere across parts of Wales and western, northwestern England and perhaps into Scotland sees any of these downpours. But like I said, all or nothing, if you get a downpour, they could be intense. We're talking intense rain, some large hail as well. And so it could cause some problems, but pretty unlikely that anywhere actually sees any of those. A similar picture on Saturday, plenty of sunshine across much of England and into Wales too, a bit cloudier towards the northwest, perhaps a greater chance of seeing some of those showers, some of those downpours compared to Friday, but still they're pretty much all or nothing. Many places will avoid them and stay totally dry, but if you do get any of those downpours, again, some intense rain and some large hail to watch out for as well. Looking further ahead, and as we go through the end of the weekend, things turn a little bit messier. We will get uh, a few weak fronts crossing our paths and then a system pushing its way in gradually from the northwest as we go through later Sunday into Monday. There is a sort of wavy feature on this front, and so that is leading to a fair bit of uncertainty as to the timing, the positioning of this feature. This is the Met Office global model here, and it shows you it's going to be lying across central parts of the UK really as we go into Monday. Worth noting though that the EC model is quite a bit quicker, so that comes through uh, and brings the rain a little bit earlier, but then clears away whereas GFS, the US model, is much slower and brings it in much later. The importance with this, not only the rain, uh, which could be a bit heavy at times, but also the fact that it's going to bring something a little bit more comfortable, a bit fresher, a drop in our temperatures behind it as that pushes its way through. Back to temperatures though, and this chart shows the probability of getting above 30 Celsius, and I already said that Saturday's likely to be the peak in this heat wave where we could get 33, possibly 34. You can see there's a very good chance, particularly across much of England, particularly in the southeast, we're going to get above 30 Celsius on Saturday. On Sunday, a slightly lower chance, but fairly good that we're still going to be above 30 Celsius, which is why that record for consecutive days above 30 in September is likely to be broken or is going to be broken, to be honest. And then on Monday, it's not out of the question. It's, not an, it's a non-zero chance of getting above 30 in some places, but really by then I am expecting it to clear through. And like I said, there's uncertainty with that front that's coming through. And so if EC is correct and brings it all through much quicker, then we will see temperatures much lower than this. 
uh, by the time that we get to Monday. So definitely things turning more comfortable. And you can see that in the meteograms for our capital cities. So way above average for the time of year uh, at the moment. But then it's a notable drop as we go through towards uh, the beginning of next week. So from Monday onwards, yes, there is a bit of spread on Monday in particular because of that uncertainty with that system coming through. But by next week, we really are going to see temperatures around or just a little bit above average for the time of year. And that's both by day and by night. You can see our nighttime temperatures, which are closer to what we'd expect for our daytime highs. They're also going to drop down. So it's going to turn more comfortable for all of us as we go into next week. Weather-wise for next week, bit of uncertainty. Here's the EC chart for Monday, and you can see where it's got a fair bit of rain coming in from the uh, northwest and a pretty wet picture for most of us, uh, but then that will clear through. But the important thing to look through the whole week, and this chart shows us the precipitation anomaly. So the blues show where it's likely to be wetter than average, and the reds show where it's likely to be drier than average. And really, as we go through next week, it's more likely towards the north that you're going to have a wetter period compared to seasonal average, whereas in the south, things are generally looking a little bit drier. I don't think it'll be as dry or as hotter and sunny by any means as what we've seen through this week. But yes, there should be some decent dry weather to come. Looking even further ahead and our attention turns out to the Atlantic, we have tropical cyclone Lee, which is currently sitting here out in the uh, southern Atlantic. And uh, as well as that, there's another tropical cyclone as well. And those are likely to interfere with our weather as we go into the third week of September. Here's the track of Lee. You can see, first of all, it heads westwards towards the US, but then it will go northwards and then eventually eastwards. And the other tropical cyclone is also likely to head towards our, our shores albeit heavily changed, altered by the time it reaches us into the third week of September. But it's worth bearing in mind that we are likely to have some more changeable weather at times as we go later in the month. For the here and now, and there probably will be some warnings, maybe some thunderstorms or some rain warnings due to the uh, intense rain that we could see through this weekend and into the beginning of next week. So worth keeping up to date with the forecast on all of our social media channels.